We took out our dishwasher. If you opened it, you got tetanus. If you smelled it, you died. And if you ran it, it leaked water into our basement. So it was really a win-win situation to not have it. But now I have to do all of our dishes, which is like the worst problem to deal with because if I make a mess, I don't want to clean it up. Unbelievable. So now I've got to like actually sit down and plan time to do dishes. Unbelievable. Hey Siri, schedule me tomorrow at 12 to do the dishes, I guess. You already have another appointment about chips and salsa on the couch in your underwear while watching the entire series of Stargate Atlantis from beginning to end for the fourth time in your life and you're only in your 30s at 12 p.m. Should I schedule it anyway? No, that was kind of Would judgment. Would you like to change something or just cancel? <laughs> Do not cancel. Yeah, no. All right, I'll leave it off your calendar. Yeah, good, th good thinking. Yeah, that's... It was kind of judgmental, but um, sounds like I've got a full day, yeah. Dishes ain't happening tomorrow, boys. Better try next week. The B and the R have worn off of our brew button, so it just is an ew button. I actually like it better this way. But today we're gonna make a nice little thing of coffee. You start with your coffee, you pour your coffee made in, you pour your coffee made in. <laughs> you know what? You deserve it. That looks good. Uh, the next problem is you gotta take it over here and you gotta warm it up because you poured so much coffee made in there that it is now cold. So you just put that in there and uh, uh, you let it warm up and then you go back over here and you, you turn this on and you put your wine bottle back and then you go check and see if there's any new food in your fridge. There's not, actually there is less. Perfect. That's... Good morning. That is a cup of coffee I'm proud to hang a hat on. A couple months ago, I stored some grass seed in our basement and it ended up working perfect for me. Which is a miracle, actually. Because I aged it like a terrible cheese. Well, at the same time, I put this fertilizer down there with the intent of I'd eventually find our push spreader. Uh, long story short, uh, I cannot find our push spreader. Like, I could have only put it in the garage or the shed or the basement or the living room or bathroom. Uh, can't find it. So I, I finally said today, I was like, our new grass is growing, our other grass is doing grass things, we need to put some fertilizer down. I knew where our hand spreader was though. So I went downstairs and I grabbed the handle of our hand spreader and realized it was a tape dispenser. So I don't have a hand spreader or a regular spreader, but I've got this tape dispenser that isn't going to do me any good. I could use a knife to open this, but that would take all the fun out of it. I'm about to tear at it. Oh yeah, that's some good looking slow release. If I've seen good looking slow release. Uh, we're using Malorganite. Um, my review is that it works really well for making my grass not look terrible. So, try it. Malorganite. My Lorganite. It's better than nothing. Dollop a daisy. Don't want to get it uneven. You gotta make sure it's perfect. Don't want a yard like this to get over fertilized. That would mean, hey little buddy, you probably shouldn't be nearby. But here you are. You gonna help me fertilize? You're gonna do it in a different way than I will. Because if I did that, people would call the police. Thank you. Just take it all in, you know? You don't have to comment on it, just take it all in emotionally. Would you just look at that? It's like a sea of happiness. Look how green it is. I just put it down. Amazing. Grass knows when you put forth max effort and when you work harder and not smarter. And I've written the book on that today. Well, is that a good idea? No. What, is a spreader essential? 
no, so I didn't go buy one. And the other one will probably turn up in a couple weeks anyways. So yeah, we got it. Um, it already looks greener, I think. Or I just need to go lay down, I'm not sure. Let's see how the rest of the day goes. Ah. What is this? Salt? Running a little low on that. Gotta, gotta save. Gotta save that. What else we got? Chips. We got syrup. Got cereals. Got oatmeal. Uh, I don't. No, I don't. I don't. I don't want anything. Maybe I do want something. What do we have here? We got flan, we got chips, we got salt, we got cereal, we got, we got soup. No, uh, no, I, I don't need anything. I wonder what we have in here. Oh. Mm, no, nothing pleases me. Don't even want it. I wonder if anything has... <sighs> Fine, I guess I'll eat reheated Taco Bell again. I don't want to go to the store, but I'm hungry. So we're going to try some experimentation here and see how it goes. We have Ritz with thyme and basil, flame and hot Ritz, Weber grilled dry rub seasoning Ritz, Ritz and brown sugar, Ritz and broccoli, Ritz and nacho cheese, Ritz and Nutella, Ritz and pickles, or pickle Ritz, Ritz and salsa, and Ritz and a beefy five layer burrito from Taco Bell. This is pretty much the most balanced meal I think I've ever had in my life. So let's give her a shot. I could go shopping. I don't wanna. This is what I want. This is what my body desires. Have you ever seen anything more appetizing? We're gonna go through these one by one and we're going to see how they are. Actually, I don't think some of these are gonna be terrible. So we're gonna go Ritz with basil and thyme. <laughs> Actually, that's delightful. Um, I, really, I really feel like this is one of the few ones that's actually gonna be good. And it's very unfortunate I started with it. Okay. So Ritz and thyme basil, wonderful. How about, we've got flaming Cheetos here on a Ritz cracker. I mean, what's not to like? I think a little bit of the thyme and basil got onto that one. It's a very thyme heavy. It kind of blended in the flavor of the flaming hot and the Ritz, surprisingly, and just became like a starchy doughy mess. It still had some heat, but it, it really wasn't... I had high hopes for that one. How about a Ritz and nacho cheese? I mean, nacho cheese makes everything better. I'm, I, I'm gonna go for the whole one of this. Yeah. Think about when you go to a gas station and they have that machine that you push for the hot dog juice and it all comes out um, like some sort of yellow cheese that is good whether it's cold or hot or stale or moldy. It, does, it doesn't matter, it's good. Yeah, that was a no-brainer. Um, we gotta get our, our vegetables in here. I'm not a big fan of leaves uh, or trees or whatever you wanna call this. I, I don't, have a, don't have a lot of high hopes for a piece of cold broccoli on a Ritz cracker, but it's got a gooey liquidiness that you would think you would be okay with. But um, it honestly wasn't bad. I, I mean, Broccoli's awful anyways, so putting a Ritz cracker on it made it better. Do they, do they belong together? No, they don't. Nah, they, they don't belong together at all. Uh, pickle Ritz. I, I don't know about this one. Pickles? This is a bread and butter pickle, so let's be very clear. No other pickle will touch my mouth. No other pickle will touch my mouth. Um, so it's already got that sweetness to it, so... I don't know. When I was a kid, my mom used to make like a tuna mayonnaise, like dill pickle dip. I, I realize now that pretty much the only thing I ever 
taste it and it was the pickle. That's fine. I, I wouldn't recommend it without the rest of the dip stuff, but I, I'm game. <laughs> that wasn't that bad. We have Ritz and Salsa. I'm curious about the salsa. It's kind of like a, this is basically like chips and salsa, but with a cracker. Like, we're not fooling anybody. Are we fooling anybody about the chip situation? No, no one's, no one cares. I, I have a feeling this is gonna be, uh, <laughs> it may have been on there a little too long and there's not much crunch left to it. I didn't realize that part of the good goodness of chips and salsa is the crunch. I didn't realize that if you took the crunch away and just put like a weird mushiness underneath the salsa, you just have like a, a spoon to hold your salsa, which is basically what a chip is, but yeah, believe me, that wasn't a chip. No, I don't, no, I, I wouldn't do that one again. So now we have Ritz and brown sugar. We live in the South, like, let's bring it home. I kind of feel like this is just a sovapia. Like, instead of a tortilla, I have a Ritz cracker. No. Well, okay, this one was weird. You know, you see brown sugar and you're like, I wanna eat that, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be sweet, and you eat it and you're like, what is this? Because you think it's gonna be good and it's not. It had that at first, but it, it kind of had like a chemically undertone. Maybe it's just a brown sugar, I don't know, it's just from the store where, where everybody buys brown sugar. The aftertaste was on point. It basically became a sopapilla once it started mushing around in there. I think it was wonderful. I would, I would do that. Now we have a Ritz and Nutella. Nutella is good on literally, uh, whatever you put Nutella on, I really don't know. But is it gonna be good on Ritz? No, I, I didn't think you could mess up a Ritz or, or mess up a Nutella. The broccoli Nutella was better than that. I don't know. Dessert was awful. Let's try a beefy five layer burrito and a Ritz. Mmm. So I was thinking when the nacho cheese was good, that nacho cheese, beans, cheese, meat, it was gonna be like a, like home run. Like your goalie took the interception, they did the pass to the quarterback, caught it, and then they ran it all nine yards to bring it home. You know what? I think it'd be better without the Ritz. It's better without the Ritz, actually. But the Ritz didn't hurt it. I didn't say it made it better, but it didn't hurt it. Ironically, I think the winner out of all this was me just going through the spice rack and putting thyme and rosemary on a Ritz. Who knew that all I had to do was just dump some Italian seasoning on something and it would be better. The Italians, actually. They had a feeling. Some of it was good. And some of it should have stayed in my kitchen in the bags. Thinking about taking the old Buick for a drive. Thinking about it. Really thinking about it. But and the garage door doesn't have like an automatic opener. You gotta, you gotta lift it manually and... <sighs> I, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. That's a dishwasher I took out. Um, you're probably asking why I put it in our backyard, but a thousand years from now, an archeologist is gonna find this and think about what kind of dinosaur it is. It is a Tappan 9001. Delayed start edition. She's a beaut. This is my take and bake, and I'm pairing it today with a sweet green. I know most people are thinking you should pair this with a dry white, or maybe even a dry red, but the sweet green is really where it's at. This is a 2020 vintage, so while it's fairly recent, it's had a good time for the tannins to do whatever tannins do to get inside my body. I think my resume to the Ritz factory is complete. I'm just gonna send them this video and then they're gonna be like, that guy, <laughs> block him. <laughs> Don't respond to him. He won't stop sending us videos. But yeah, I think this is a fun experiment. Today's been a solid 7.2 out of 10.